Uh, Acts chapter 9. I'm taking a little bit of a different turn. We are continuing with the book of Acts. I was not sure that was the direction that the Lord wanted us to go. I thought if I'm going to turn, I would take a, uh, three weeks ago, we uh, talked about Saul and his conversion. Uh, two weeks ago, we, we, we talked about, um, we had the, um, the Lord's Supper uh, on Resurrection Sunday. And I, I, I thought if it, this would be a good time to break and go in a different direction if I was going to, but the Lord um, this week really confirmed in my, in my spirit that I know where I'm headed for probably about the next, next six or seven weeks. Um, so we're going to stay in the book of Acts at least until summer, and we'll see where we go from there. If I told you that amazing things were possible, would you believe me? Would you? If I ask you that God could do things amazing, outstanding, beyond, exceedingly abundantly above type things, do you believe God can do that? The, the God that we serve is the same God that created the world, right? Holds it together. Gives us breath. Gives us life. Gives us joy. Gives us peace. There's nothing that our God can't do. Y'all believe that? Do you believe the admonition that, uh, that we can do? If God so leads us to do it, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us? We believe that God can touch. We believe that God can bless. We believe that, that He is an amazing kind of a God. We stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I haven't seen Him face to face yet, but one day I will. And we understand that God leaves us on this world to walk by faith, not by sight. By faith. The presence of those things not yet seen, the evidence of those things not seen. It is amazing that faith is how we see God. Faith is how we touch God. Faith is how we can take the blessings of heaven and make them our own. And for every Christian, you were saved by grace through. And if you were saved by the abundance of God's pouring out His favor and grace to us as we receive it by faith, then we learn that we must also walk with Him by faith. If you get saved by faith, if that's the process of believing and trusting and reaching out and receiving it by, by faith, then surely that's the same way that we need to walk. It's not like we're going to get it one way and then put that aside and live our life a different way. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that the only way that we as Christians, God's people, can please God, put a smile on His faith, face, is to live by faith. So what God wants in our life is an interactive relationship where He continuously pours His grace into our life and we receive it by faith. I'm going to say that again. God's best for you individually as you were created, if you're a Christian, as you were saved, His very best blessing, His grace is for you and you receive it and you walk in it you live it and you love it by faith. In Acts 9, verse 31, Saul and his conversion has come to an end, and, and God gives them peace for a season. Sometimes God will do that. Sometimes we'll go through seasons of absolute terrible Almost wars, bickering, fussing, fights, uh, morality's terrible, uh, sickness is everywhere. There's just brokenness. Literally, the crushing or the oppression of this world comes upon us. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I don't know what to tell you. Because ever since I've known Christ, I've felt it. And I've seen it. It's really 
tough. But in this season, God gave them a break. In this season, God gave them peace. Look what it says, verse 31. Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, Samaria had peace and were edified. That word edified is it, it, it's the building up like a building up of a house. You pour the foundation, you have a solid foundation, and then you build up from that. Just like us as Christians, we received Christ, that's our foundation. But this godly house, he continues to build up us into the image of the, of the holiness of Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen? Amen? So during this season, there was peace. God was going to do an amazing thing. People were being edified. They're growing in, they're maturing. They're being perfected in their faith. And it says, listen now, and walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort, or really the word is encouragement, of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. Now, I don't know if you caught that, but there's two amazing things about the Christian life there. In this time of peace, God began to bless, pour out His mercies, to extend them like they have not seen. And the church was growing because the Christians were, were in this state of receiving from God. Here it is, the fear of the Lord and the comfort or the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. Let's have a word of prayer. Now, Father, speak as only you can. It's time where we move away distractions and we focus our thoughts, our eyes, our souls, our minds, are hearing on you. This is your word. It's 100% true. It always blesses. I pray, Lord, that we would receive it today. Father, as you gave them a season of peace where you could build them, I actually pray that as you have put us in the midst of this world, that at New Holland Baptist Church in the lives of your people now, that you would give us a season of peace in the struggles and the oppressions and the hardships of the world, may the peace of God reign supremely within us and build us into the image. Grow us, O Lord. Through this process that you've placed before us, the fear of the Lord, the encouragement and comfort of the Holy Spirit, teach us what it means. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The fear of the Lord. It can be defined as the all. A-W-E, the reverence, a mighty holy look at an awesome God who could speak a word and the world could be created, who can hold the world in his hand and give us breath and life, who knows you and loves you and keeps you and protects you, who guides you, he gives you his very best. But knowing all of that, I will tell you that people have lost the fear of God, the reverence of God, the awesomeness of God. They come to receive God. They want the peace of God. They want the salvation. They want the cleansing that comes from the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us of all of our sins. That They love the fact that God will take them and sanctify them and, and do a holy thing that one day they will see him in heaven and they will walk the streets of glory, never to deal with sickness or pain or heartache again. And we're grateful for that and we want that. And Lord, give us the blessings of salvation. But yet, knowing that all of those things come from their hand, as they live their everyday life, they put God on the back burner. They don't think much about Him. They don't search His Word. They don't really pray to Him unless there's a problem. 
Yes, they know he's there. Yes, they know he, he looks over them and he keeps them with his wonderful, powerful, loving hand. But, but we've got so many other distractions. We've got so many other things that we chase after and we think are important. And all these things come up and we take the great Lord of God for granted. And if we're not careful, it will lead us down a road of destruction. Listen, in the last six weeks... Two precious friends of mine that I spent much time with, they were both uh, addicts. I helped them. I was just really, now I, let me time out there. I didn't help them, the Lord helped them. I was just walking beside them as God helped them and, and healed them. And God gave them both great testimonies, amazing testimonies. Both were, one of them I called the CEO uh, he just had more gifts within him. The other one was living in a tent, a pup tent. His teeth were rotting out because of meth. God saved them. God restored them. The one who had no teeth, a, a, a surgeon, a dental surgeon went in, took the old things out, put all things new. He had a, a smile that Hollywood would have loved. He had a testimony of the grace of God and everybody, he was, he was going all over the place sharing the testimony of the goodness of God. But in each of their lives, when every, come on now, when everything got good, they didn't have the same passion for chasing after God as when things were crushed and broken. And yes, things came into their life. And yes, depression followed. And where does an addict go when they get depressed? Back to their old things, their old crutches. In the last six weeks, two dear friends of mine are now dead. 30, 32. Both of them. Unbelievable gifts of God. Now, I hope you hear my heart here because they took God for granted. They put him on the back burner and they quit walking in the fear of the Lord. How many of you know God wants his very best for us? How many of you know that if you turn away from that and you do not receive God's very best, he's not going to jam it down your throat. He'll make it available. He prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. The world is out there around us and God's got this buffet of goodness there that he wants us to scoot up to the table and eat of. But if we don't want to go to the table and eat, he's not going to force us. The fear of the Lord and the comfort, the encouragement, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, as a Christian, this is what happens we receive Christ, then we walk in His way. And we let the Holy Spirit, though we don't see Jesus, we feel the Holy Spirit. We're led by His hand. Christians, look up here. Do you know when the Holy Spirit speaks to your soul? I've never heard an audible voice, but God has spoken. Amazingly, he has led me. He has warned me. He has helped me. He has guided me. I have seen God do amazing things. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> and in the midst of God seeing amazing things, I have seen Christians lower the standards of walking with God. In the next few moments, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to throw away every prejudiced thought of how you think God works and be open to that leading of the Holy Spirit in your life that God may want to refresh and your spirit. Is that fair? Just listen to the Word of God. Don't amen Brian, but amen the Word of God.
Listen to his spirit. When he confirms it in your heart, say amen to the spirit of God. The fear of the Lord and the comfort, the encouragement, the strengthening by the Holy Spirit leading us, guiding us. I want you to see what happened in the life of a man by the name of Peter. Stand with me in honor of reading God's Word. Let's look in verse 32. Now it came to pass as Peter went through all parts of the country that he also came down to the saints who dwell at Lida, is how I pronounce it. Actually, in Greek, it's Luda, but I, I just look at it and say Lida. Can y'all say amen? amen? I don't know what it really is. We'll find out when we get to heaven. There, there he found a certain man named a certain man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus the Christ heals you. Arise and make your bed. Then he arose. What's the word there? Amen. Say it again. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? Peter spoke it. Jesus the Christ heals you. You believe God can do that? Amen. Don't let the Holy, don't let the world, the, the God of this world water that down. Can God do anything? Can God speak to someone who has been paralyzed for eight years and raise them up, let them jump up and dance and just be in glory of God? The power of God can do all things. Amen? Amen. All right. So all who dwelled at Lada were and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Verse 36, at Joppa there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. And it happened in those days that she became sick and died. Uh-oh. Sick and dead. Does that not sound like a period? That sounds like the end, doesn't it? When we get to this point, we say, well, they lived a good life. Bless God. That's it. No more living down here for them. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And since Lida was near Joppa and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose, went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room and all the wid widows stood by him weeping, showing the tunics and the garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all out. Y'all get out of here. And he knelt down. What did he do? He prayed. You better hear from God before you strike out on your own. He gets down on his knees. He's bearing his soul. He knows the need. And he said, Tabitha, that's in the Hebrew. Dorcas is in the Greek. Tabitha, Arise. In Genesis, God spoke and the word was, world was created. But here, Jesus, or Peter, excuse me, by the leading of the Holy Spirit of God, spoke. And when he spoke, the power of the Holy Spirit was upon it. And he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Then he gave her his hand, lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive. From crying to, I guarantee you, shouting. Amen. From losing their friend to having her back. To seeing what life would bring, death. To seeing what Jesus could bring, life. Verse 42, and it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed on the Lord. You can be seated. A miracle is an impossibility for us, but it's a small thing for God. I, I know that I have seen miracles. I have been there when God healed. We had a, a deacon in church, went to the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, 
to do surgery on him. The doctor opened him up to do surgery. Saw cancer. Cancer was everywhere. Did not even do the surgery that he was started that day to do. Closed him up. Sent him home to go see an oncologist. <clears throat> he got home from the hospital on a Wednesday and came to church that night. Midweek service. Y'all know we do midweek service? Okay, I didn't know if everybody knew. And, and we have this thing called prayer meeting on Wednesday night. Well, most of the time it's Bible study. They just come and I, I preach. But that night, I just called him up and we put a chair down here in front. And I said, church, it's time to pray. And we all got around that man and we prayed over him. Now, I can't remember any of the prayers, but I remember the Spirit. And we prayed in faith. And I believe if you call on the elders of the church, if someone's sick and bring them, do what the Bible says, bring them to the elders and that we will pray over them, pray over them. I prayed in faith. I prayed believing. I prayed trusting because that's what the Word of God tells us to do. If you come to me, I'm not going to come with this. I, well, maybe, I don't know. Lord, I think they're going to die. But you do what you can. That's not the way we do. Like I said, I don't remember the prayers, but I remember the feeling in that place. They went to see the oncologist. He said, we'll check it out. They did tests on him, took pictures of him. And he said, oh, we need to have a meeting. So he got the surgeon in there, and he, this other doctor got in there, and he gets in there with him. And the, I just remembered his name, but I'm not going to say it. said, um, this is what I saw. And the oncologist says, well, it's not there. And the doctor got mad. I've been a doctor all these years. I've been a surgeon. I know cancer when I see it. I saw it. And he said, well, I'm sorry. It's not there. And he showed him all the pictures. And said, matter of fact, you don't need any treatments. Go home. That's been 18 years. I can take you to his house today. He's still doing well. Hadn't had any trouble. I've seen what God can do. I've felt the leadership of the Holy Spirit in my life. I've said things to people God told me to say. That was the exact word to say. I've preached as God told me to preach. Scripture, I had no idea. Someone came out there and said, this is exactly what I've been going through. I've been dealing with. I'm like, folks, that's not me. That's the Spirit of the living God. He knows how to do those things. Do y'all believe that? Now, hold on. I can tell you, that's not the only time I've seen the hand of God. I've seen it over and over and over and over again. But we have gotten to a place that we don't really believe those things. Now, if somebody's in need, we'll say, yeah, I think we should pray. But the Holy Spirit of God is like, let's do this every day. Let's walk every day. Peter gets to this place. It doesn't tell us why when he saw Aeneas, he just saw him. Verse 33 said it. He found a certain man named Aeneas who was bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, now he didn't stop and pray. He didn't stop to do 20 things. I literally believe this is the pattern of God. For him in that moment, God said, you see this guy? I want to bless this man. I want you to speak healing over him. So Peter did. Peter Boldly, I, this would scare Brian half to death. It would you too. It would you too. I'm just being honest, right? God's at work in me. We'll talk more about that in a second. He said to him, he said, Aeneas, Jesus the Christ heals you. That's bold. Christ is speaking to that sickness within him. Peter's just voicing it. Peter's not healing him. The Spirit of God is healing in him. And he says, Christ, Jesus the Christ, heals you. Now, based upon that, arise, and I like this, 
By the way, make up your bed. Do something. Do the right thing. And you know what? The power of God took the Word of God, spoken through the man of God, and blessed the one in need. Y'all believe that? Do you really? Oh, let, let, let's, let's make it a little bigger here. Come on. He goes and he's there. And somebody in a town next door says, oh my goodness, Dorcas has died. She was such a blessing. Y'all know those ladies? Those ladies that are just blessings. You get around them and they just lift your spirit and encourage. And, and you love them so much and, and you miss them so much and you're hurting so much. And, and she dies and they, they clean her up good. They put her in the open. And the widows, they're there. Now, in that day, you showed how much you loved by how much you cried. Not so much today. We just show up and say, I'm sorry. But you could tell they cared. And they're saying, we got to do something. Now, I say that to say this. Why in the world would they call for Peter? There was an expectation there. Would y'all agree? I mean, otherwise, I mean, they weren't calling Peter to do the funeral service. There was an expectation that was there on those people on behalf. You know, sometimes we need some people all this is a need in the church. We need some people who I call intercessors. Want somebody that sees the need and grabs a hold of that need in prayer, and they're not going to turn loose until God blesses. Do y'all think we need that? Do you think there's some people that need a, a God to grab a hold of them? I think so. Well, here we see what happens. Peter's there and he gets in there and, and, and they're all showing him everything that's happening. He says, y'all yeah, just stay out here. I, I need to hear a word from God. I'm not going to do anything until God tells me to. And he kneels down. Lord, what have I got myself into? Lord, I've seen you do it. I was there when you said to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus, I was right there with you when we were walking down the road and walked up on a funeral service and you healed that man and he came up out of that coffin and a funeral service turned into a celebration parade. I've seen what you can do. But Lord, is this something you want to do? Is this something you want to do through me? You know, most of us believe God can do great things. Amen? But do you really believe God can do great things through you? Now, I appreciate your prayers for Preacher Brian. And, and I'll take them all. Y'all just keep on sending them my way. No, don't send them my way. Send them to heaven. And, and the Holy Spirit will send them my way. Is that fair? But I pray for you. Because we don't have an army of one, amen? We are the army. And what God did through Jesus, God could do through Peter, and God could do through you. Is it the same power? Is it the same Holy Spirit? Is there any difference? Why is this part of God's holy, infallible Word of God? It shows us his way. It shows us his power. But he didn't say, here's what I could do, but you can't do. Let's go back to that verse again. I can do all things through who strengthens me, who gives me the enablement. It's not what I can do, it's what he can do. But I believe and I know and I trust that if it's God's will, he can even do that in me. Hold on, through me. Literally, the picture is this. Peter is there and he grabs a hold of heaven, or I like to say heaven grabs a hold of him. And he grabs a hold of the need and the power of God flows through 
but by his faith he speaks it. And creation, new life comes. Tabitha, arise. That's not a long statement, is it? But it's a statement of faith. Now, hold on. A few minutes ago, I made this statement. How many of you are willing to open yourself up to the truth and reality as God lays it in your heart? I call this ACE. A-C-E. It began with Adam. Adam was perfect. He was in the Garden of Eden. Everything was provided for him. He had no needs. He had no troubles. He had no heartache. He, he got along with his wife all the time. Can you say amen? amen? Woo, it was good. Everything was wonderful. No sickness, no death. What a wonderful thing. But sin came in. And if you read Genesis 3, now he's having to, to work and to labor and, and toil. Now there's thorns and briars. Now there's conflict. And he's having to, to, to work the soul to the place of exhaustion. He's having to trust God to provide because God has changed the earth. They're no longer in the Garden of Eden. Now he might say something and his wife may say, what'd you say? They had children who grew up to be teenagers. Some of y'all wanted to amen right there. You just didn't do it. I wonder what it was like the first time that Adam asked his son to do something and his boy turned to him and said, no. How many of y'all have heard that? At our house, if they said no like that, can I get an amen, Jared? They usually ducked. No. Because Lynn was going to go whoosh. Or me, if I could catch them. <clears throat> and children fussed and fought. All the things Adam had to go through, standing at the graveside where he was, where, where he was burying one boy who was murdered by another boy. Things, God never wanted it to be that way. Adam, then Christ. Christ came in. God stepped into life to show us the possibilities. What a life lived with God is really like. Jesus' first miracle. He went to a wedding. They ran out of wine. Jesus wasn't really interested in it. It wasn't his affair. But his mama told him. Mama got involved, and the Scripture tells us that we're supposed to honor our father and mother. So you know what Jesus did? He did what his mama told him to do. An obedient young boy. He told him, says, hey, take those things, pour water in it. Now, you have to understand, in that day, it was kind of like as, as we make up Kool-Aid, they would put paste in there. It was, a, it was a base paste where they would take the grapes and they would take, to keep them and preserve them, they would make a paste out of it. You add water to it, stir it up, great things could happen. They'd have wine, non-fermented wine, by the way. So he put the, he didn't know that there was paste in there. He just said, go pour water into it and pour it out. And when they did, what'd they get? Wine. First miracle he did. But Jesus did many miracles. He healed the sick. Gave sight to the blind, ability to walk to the lame. He said to the lepers, be cleansed. Don't you know that was a word for something else? You, we can be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? I mean, did they have financial needs? He, one time Peter got himself in a hole making a promise that he couldn't keep. So Jesus is like, are we supposed to pay these taxes? A am I not a, a, a Hebrew, a Jew here? I mean, what, what are we doing, Peter? But I tell you what, so that we don't offend anybody, take a hook, some string, go throw it in the Sea of Galilee there and, and pull it up and you'll find a gold coin in his hand, in his mouth, the fish's mouth. I wonder how Peter felt. Okay. Goes out there, throws the hook. No bait. You don't need bait when you got Jesus. Catches a fish, pulls it out. 
I, I like how God prepares the miracle. I, that, that fish somewhere just said, hey, there's a gold coin. And God took him to the right place at the right time so that he could get caught and open his mouth and give Peter that coin and go pay taxes. There's nothing that our God can't do. He could even speak to the dead and they could be raised. There was nothing that Christ can't do. But hear me. They would run out of wine again. They would have financial troubles again. The ones who were healed of sickness would get sick again. The ones who had emotional troubles couldn't get along with others, picked on by others. The ones who felt all the the worries and the troubles of life, they would have those things again. And yes, the one that was healed from the widow of Nain, that boy would die again. Lazarus, who was called by Jesus from the tomb, would die again. But through Christ, we can see the possibilities. A, C, C. Now, I want you to hear the E. That's the eternal. I believe God still does miracles. But there's a lot of preaching today that if you're faithful, God will make you rich. If you're faithful and you speak it in faith, God will do anything for you. God will take care of this. God will take care of that. I don't understand how these preachers that, that go around and, and, and they preach all this stuff, but they walk in like this. Can't heal themselves. I've seen all the stuff that's going on. Hold on. That's not biblical. Do I believe God can do great things? Yes. But let me tell you what God's interested in. God, Jesus, left heaven to come to earth, not so that he could show everybody how powerful he was, but he wanted to bring power to people's lives, a relationship, no more sin, a cleansing, a love, the fruit of the Spirit, for goodness sake, living within us. And yes, one day when I close my eyes, I can go to heaven. Look at these two miracles. I want you to see the why. The first miracle in Chapter 9, verse number 35. This is when Aeneas is out jumping up, walking around. Verse 35. So all, say that word with me. Say it. All All means all, then that's all all means. Nobody's left out. Y'all good with that? So all who dwelt in Lida and Sharon saw him and turned to The Lord. Not just one person got blessed. They all got blessed because they got Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. Let's look in verse number 42. Tabitha has been arisen. Dorcas is now alive. And it came and it became known throughout all Joppa and many, not all, but it says many believed On the Lord. A lot of people got changed. A lot of people got saved. A lot of people got set free. It wasn't the one thing. It was a great thing. It was a mighty thing. It was a wonderful thing. And they lived forever. And their lives were full of joy and peace. Come on. And as long as they lived in the fear of the Lord, the leading, the comfort, the encouragement, the help of the Holy Spirit, they grew and had peace and they were built up. We've got too many sad Christians, too many defeated Christians, too many people who say, oh, that's great for other people, but I don't know that God can do great things through me. Jose, your testimony had the power of a miracle in it. Everyone here, when God leads you to speak encouragement, to brag on Jesus, to share Christ, to share love, 
to give somebody financially so that they understand that there are still people who care. To give them a cup of cold water. Don't tell me that God will not take the same power of creation, of healing, of blessing, and use it in you. And by the way, God still hears prayers of healing. I'm praying for families that are healed. I'm praying for families to be turned loose from this draw of the world. I'm praying for people that are addicted to be set free. I'm praying for not just addiction of drugs and alcohol, yes, for them, but for their addiction to idols, for their addiction to, to the, the praise of this world. How do we do it? We just let the fruit of the Spirit grow within us. We take the Word of God, we believe the Word of God, we trust the Word of God, we live the Word of God, we speak the Word of God. And as we speak it, God makes it real. God makes it happen. We're going to be talking about exercising our faith for the next few weeks. It doesn't happen overnight. How many of y'all wanted to lose weight? Raise your hand. Sometime in your life you want to lose weight? I'm going to lose 40 pounds in the next three weeks. Pray on. And, and I'm going to celebrate by losing this 40 pounds. I'm going down to Golden Corral and I'm going to go to the buffet. Amen? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Bless you. But I'm here to tell you, if you will follow what God tells you to do, what the Spirit of life brings you to do, if you get in agreement with God, you can do all things. It's a growing. A muscle will become strong if you exercise it. What happens if you don't? It atrophies. It goes away. Where's your faith, church? We just sang, there's nothing that our God can't do. I want to tell you this. There's nothing that our God won't do to bring people to Jesus, to encourage you, and to produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit within you, if you'll let him.